we've created all of our individual renders using our creative imaging photo render projection. We're now going to open those up in Photoshop and add them all together. So we're going to open up one. Generally I'll start with the the outline, that's the, the base. And the advantage of saving these all in the same way is that they all should be here. I named this one wrong. This one should be called clear and this one should be called shadow. Then I'll just drag and drop all the rest over the top. Uh, so normally I'll have hatch next and that'll fit right to place and it will bring it in as an, an object. So I, I will later rasterize these images, but I don't need to do that just yet. Um, next, I will do my shadow. And I could do my clear, um, but I won't do the transparent one at the moment. All right, let's bring it in. Yeah, that's good. Maybe we'll get rid of this one. All right. Now, we can't see the ones behind. They're all there because uh, they're all solid. They've all got a white background. So what we're going to do with these first two is to change them to multiply. And multiply. And that means that we're seeing through everything. The problem is that the top ones are very, very dark, very, very dense, and it takes away from what we're trying to do. So what I'm going to do is to reduce the intensity, or therefore reduce the opacity of each one of these views. So I'm going to take that down to roughly 50. And I could reduce this one down to 50 as well if I wanted to. And so we can see here that the the background or the sketch layer starts to become more intense. That tends to stand at the front. Now, if I want to make that a bit dr more dramatic, what I can do is to copy that, layer new by copy, bring that to the front, and multiply that one as well. And that helps it to be a little bit more dominant, and I can multiply that layer as well, uh, as in layer new, drag a copy, multiply that so that we've got more of that intensity sitting at the front. And then once I'm happy with how the settings work, I can, well, until I'm happy with how the settings work, I can adjust my shadows, intensities, and filters, and things like that. So we've got it generally working nice, and, and the shape's not bad. Uh, I'm going to reduce the overall size of my image. It makes it much larger than I want. So I want to crop it down to a point where it's, just bigger than the building. Image crop, that's going to allow me to crop all of these images all together, all these layers, I should say, all together. Um, Command D or Control D to deselect. And now I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting by bringing in an additional layer. And the additional layer I'm going to bring in is a watercolor background. And I'll stretch that to fit the shape. I don't care that it's been distorted in this case. Now I want to multiply this. So it sits at the front. And I want to decrease its intensity dramatically. Now I might want to keep this color. Or if I didn't want to keep the color, I could take all the color out by uh, desaturating it. So we'll rasterize this layer, image adjustments, hue saturation, get rid of the color so it becomes black and white. And I could then play with this a little bit rather than in decreasing the opacity because it tends to wash it out. What I would do instead is increase its lightness or brightness. So let's go to uh, brightness and contrast or levels. And in levels, I can choose to increase the, the white level. And I can also move the gray a bit further away until I get to a point where I'm happy with this. 
and it's a little bit dark up the top, a little bit um, boring white down the bottom. So I'm actually going to flip this, transform, flip vertically. Great, that's what I wanted to do. And maybe just a little bit brighter, brightness. Reduce the contrast just so I've got a little bit of grey up top. And that's it. So now I've created a sketch that has a little bit more of a, a vintage look, weathered look with the, the watercolour as a multiplier over the top. That really, multiplying doesn't do a great deal. It could, it could just be a wash. Um, it will do more when I if I add colour, but I'm just going to leave this one as a black and white sketch. And then we can save that one. Again, as a JPEG or a TIFF, uh, TIFF allows me to keep my multi-layer, so the reality is I'd save both. I'd have it as a TIFF, and then I'd also save it as a JPEG uh, in order to reduce the file size if I wanted to send it out.